So let's finish our discussion here of data types by talking about dates and temporal data times uh, and talking about other data types here. Okay, so dates and times, we'll start with that first. So in SQL Server 2012, we can store a column that just has the date, or we can have a column that just has the time, or we can have both the date and the time in a single column. And this may not be surprising to you if you were on SQL 20, uh, 2000, SQL 7.0. Uh, this may be a shock, but if you've been on 2008, 2008 R2, uh, these, are, these are not new data types uh, here. Now, let's just kind of walk through these. First up, let's talk about the date data type. Notice that wide range. We're going from 1 AD through 9999. And I love the efficiency. It's only three bytes. But there's no time data associated with that. Okay. It's just purely the date. Uh, the time data then, you could do have a time data type. Uh, notice the precision slash scale that we're getting to work with right here. So hours, minutes, seconds, milliseconds, um, microseconds, picoseconds. I really don't know uh, what the, the term is uh, down here. Uh, pretty efficient, though, able to get it within five bytes. Okay. And then you have your uh, what's called the small date time. And notice that date and time are in the data type because in one column we are able to store both the date and the time. Okay. Now, I have the asterisk next to this, and uh, down here at the bottom it no tells you that there's not what's called a time zone offset. So, in other words, it's not time zone aware. I'll talk more about that here in just a minute. Uh, but it's also, and most importantly, not standard SQL. You know how we talked about uh, ANSI SQL or ISO SQL standards? This is not part of the, the SQL standard. This is proprietary transact SQL code. Okay? And I think it's fairly inefficient, too, um, when we see some of the other data types here. Uh, in four bytes, we're only able to store a few dates. That's only a range of about 180 years. Uh, and notice that we do not get to store seconds. So the accuracy is only down to the minute. Okay. Uh, the date time data type, let me move that out of the way. Uh, notice, again, we're somewhat hamstrung by our range. 1753 is as far back as we can go. Um, the accuracy is to three one thousandths of a second. Uh, notice that we're able to get down to the millisecond here. Okay. And it does it in eight bytes. But again, it gets the asterisk because it's not part of the SQL standard. doesn't adhere to the SQL standard. Now, date time uh, two is part of the SQL standard, as is date and as is time. Okay? And date time two should be sort of your default data type in SQL 2012 if you need to store date and time information together. Um, you know, notice that it has the same accuracy of both date and time. Okay? Um, it's accurate to 100 nanoseconds. Uh, it doesn't offer time zone support, which is okay. Um, if you need time zone support, Date time offset is the same as date time two, okay? except that date time offset is time, what we call time zone aware. So this brings up an interesting topic, the concept of where shall we do our time zone offset. Okay? Now, what I mean is I'm giving you a time, uh, you know, a date time, January the 1st, 2013 at 4 p.m. Okay, now, wait a minute. Was that 4 p.m. in your time zone? Or was that 4 p.m. in my time zone? Oh, yeah, right. Okay. Uh, ooh, what if I'm a manager in Dallas, Texas, managing a remote team in Los Angeles, California, who's in a different time zone uh, that is two hours behind me, and I want to look at, I don't know, activity. Okay, so check-ins um, in you know, GitHub or uh, check-ins in SVN or uh, employee check-ins, payroll uh, times, Ooh, what if I'm seeing somebody checking out at 3 p.m. Or, or at 7 p.m. in the evening? 7 p.m., huh? Oh, I'm thinking, wow, that person's really, really uh, working hard for the company. But what if it was 7 p.m. Central Time? And that really represents 5 p.m. Uh, in Los Angeles. Okay? Well, I mean, they're still doing good, but I had a misconception. I was thinking they were working to 7 p.m. their time. Okay. So time zone in information is really important to us. It puts context with the time. And 
it's really not until the last, say, four or five years uh, that we've really been able to do time zone support at the data level. See, we've been able to do time zone support at the application layer, at the presentation layer, just not at the data layer. Okay, we've always been able to write an application that asks the user, what time zone are you in? And then changes all of the dates and times that are shown to them so that they match the time zone that they are currently in. You might have seen this if you go to a web forum. Uh, if you use a, a website that's powered by vBulletin or um, PBB or gosh, I don't know, any number of uh, the different forums, uh, software packages that are out there. They'll ask you, what time zone are you in? And then all of the times are shown to you relative to your time zone. Somebody may have inserted a row at 11 p.m. in Sydney, Australia, but it shows up as 6 a.m. to you in Dallas, okay? Because the application handles that time zone, what we call offset, okay? So... Your choice here, when you're talking about these two data types down here, date time two and date time offset, uh, your choice really comes down to, do you want to store the offset in the database? Do you want to offload that to the client? Okay. Where do you want to do the changing of the data? Okay. Where do you want to change time zones? Okay, when a user from Sydney looks at the data, it should so show 11 p.m. When a user from Dallas looks at the same piece of data, it should so show 6 a.m. So where do you do that offset? At the server level, in that case, you'd use date time offset. Or in the application layer, in that case, you would use date time too. And you would write your application so that it says, okay, well, Australia is, you know, plus 10 uh, UTC, or and I have no idea, actually, I'm making that up. Um, but, <laughs> so, so yeah, I really don't know all the, uh, I know you're surprised that I don't know all the um, time zone offset, uh, I have those memorized across the world. Um, but anyway, it's your choice, server or application, okay? All right, let's go through a couple of the what data type would you choose uh, things here. Let's say that you and I have to create a database that uh, manages a library, um, and the library has the ability for users to come check out a book. And when they check it out, then they have to bring it back on what's called their due date. Okay. So what data type would you use to store the checkout date, which then will help us understand what then becomes the due date? Well, you know, part of this is, I think, measured by how you choose to calculate your due date. Okay? Is your due date measured by the number of days since checkout? In other words, do we have like a rule that says you mu all books must be brought back two days after they've been checked out? Okay? Because if that's the case, if you're only going down to the day level, there's no reason to store the time information that the person checked it out. And so you just say date, uh, three bytes per row, in the 0001, 299, range, okay? You could make the case that you could put in there a small date time or a date time too, uh, something like that, um, but it just depends on whether you want to store the minutes uh, or the seconds associated with the actual checkout. But your due date won't be impacted by whether you chose to store seconds or hours or minutes, right? Your due date is simply two days, okay? So if they checked it out on Monday, it's going to be due on Wednesday, right? And, and it doesn't matter if they checked it out one you know, millisecond before closing time on Monday, still have to have it in by closing time on Wednesday, okay? Now, if we measure due date instead of by days, by number of hours, okay? So in other words, what I'm saying is we have a rule that says all books must be returned within 48 hours, what data type are you going to use? Well, you know, now we definitely need to store at least accuracy down to uh, the minute here. It depends on how, you know, strict you want to be. Do you want to say, well, they get up to milliseconds uh, on the hourly thing or to the minute or to the hour? Um, I would choose for this one a date time two. Like I said uh, earlier, the date time two is just the default date slash time data type for me in SQL 2012. Uh, it gives us our uh, proper range that we want, and it gives us all the way down to the microsecond there uh, the, of accuracy. 
Now, this is a valid question. Why not use, or what if we used a date time? And it, there's nothing wrong with date time. In fact, date time has been around longer than date time two, date and time. Um, and you'll see almost every one of your legacy applications out there uh, still running today are using the date time. If you download and look at the sample databases from Microsoft, you'll see that most of, or a large number of data types are still date time. Okay? Um, you know, here's the thing though, remember that it's eight bytes per row in the, and you get a smaller range and you get down only to the milliseconds. But if that's okay with you, if you're dealing with a library check-in system, then what do you care if it only goes back to 1753? People are going to be checking out from this point forward, okay? And it fully goes up into a, <coughs> excuse me, a long enough range to where you're not going to run out of uh, dates you know, in, in uh, many, many lifetimes, right? All right, let's do another one. What data type would you choose? Uh, so you're developing a, an employee payment system. And you have to calculate when an employee clocks in for the day. You know, you get your time card and you, you go over to the clock and you punch it. And then it puts a stamp of what time you came in. Okay. So what data type are you going to use? Well, we know that we need to store time with this, right? Um, so, again, I would opt for the date time, too. This is going to be my standard in uh, SQL Server 2012. Uh, gives us six to eight bytes per row. Now, your next one would be your offset. This depends. Do you want to store that time zone at the database layer, or do you want to do that you know, in the presentation layer? That's kind of a, a discussion you'll have to have uh, and kind of weigh the pros and cons yourself. Uh, date time certainly is an option there. Um, you know, Eight bytes per row, I, I think it would be a fine option uh, for this. Okay. I don't really think there's any value in going back to your old databases that have date time and updating slash changing them to date time too. Date time is a great data type. Don't worry about using it here. Now, what about this small date time? I want to give you somewhat of a warning with respect to small date time. I have a script here. Um, notice that in our script, we are declaring a variable called D. The D is a small date time, and I'm assigning it to Notice that we're using 01. Now, do you remember the accuracy of the small date time to the minute? Okay. So when it encounters 01, it actually rounds that down to 11.59. Okay. But when it hits 30 or higher, then it rounds it up. Okay. So be very cautious of using the small date time. I wish that small date time would have generated an error by default. Instead of doing this rounding, um, I'm, I generally don't like it when a system will change the data without telling me. Um, and that's clearly what's happened here. I passed in 11.59 p.m., and yet I received the next day at 12 o'clock a.m. Okay? So very tricky to work with uh, the small date time data type. Okay? So just kind of be careful. Um, you know, there is the option when we're storing our employee check-in clock information. What about two columns? One column for the date and one column for the time. And, and this is fine. I wouldn't choose it. And my reason is that the time is dependent upon the date. The time is not an independent entity that we care about. We care about the time in the context of the date. Therefore, to me, this is a single column. If we didn't care about the time in relationship to the date, then I'm cool with separating these out. But if they are, you know, supposed to be tied together, I'm 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 in favor of just using a a date time a date time two uh, here. Uh, but you could over normalize or denormalize in an OLAP database, just kind of depending on how you view things there. Uh, real quick rundown of the other types. The XML data type does allow us to store XML data. We have indexes that we can use. We can shred our XML documents uh, very efficiently. Um, the var binary data type, this is going to be for storing binary representations of your data. So you're going to be able to store files in the database 
um, which may not be the most efficient way. We might want to use a file table uh, or another mechanism here. Um, but it does give us the option to store files in the database or really anything that we want that we can convert to binary. Okay. Uh, another one is the unique identifier. This is going to just simply be a what's called a globally unique ID or a GUID, globally unique ID. Okay. Those are the things that kind of look like software serial numbers, 1436-PQ7Z-, uh, dash, right? That kind of thing. Um, and then finally, the SQL variant. And this is the only variant type of data type that we have. All of the others are specifically typed. You have to put integers in the integer data type. Okay, um, You have to put dates in a, date, a temporal data type here. But the SQL variant, I can have one column that's a uh, char, one column that's an inchar, one column that's an integer, uh, one row, sorry, that's a uh, date time. Uh, so the SQL variant, it varies based on whatever the data is that you pass into it. And I would really, you know, I don't know that I've written more than one line of production-level code in... I don't know, I'm calculating seven, eight years since I've been able to use this, uh, that use that. Usually I like typed columns, typed variables. Um, it's pretty rare uh, to need to do that for me. A couple of examples that I want you to take a look at here. Let's just pull up, I'll pull up the one on the left first here. Uh, notice here we have our row GUID, our row globally unique identifier. That is the unique identifier data type. They chose for this column, it's the modified date, and they still are using the old date time. No problems whatsoever uh, doing something like that. Okay. Uh, scrolling to the other one over here, we get a few more data types. We get the small money. Uh, we get the date time. A couple more of uh, these guys uh, using down here as well. Okay. Uh, there are actually no small date times in any of those uh, that I've seen. Uh, so uh, let's do this. Let's be done with data times. Let's come back. We still have three more videos of just like basic fundamental uh, table design. So let's talk about constraints starting in our next video.